Dobry wieczór wszystkim, I hope you're all doing fantastic. I'm Mystical and today I'll be bringing you the latest in AR and VR news. We actually have quite a few exciting information about new quest features that may or may not be coming to us very soon, because of course, with Meta's rollouts, we never know. That and a whole ton more in just a little bit. As usual, you guys have chapters down below if you want to skip to any specific part of the video. And with that being said, let's get right into the video. First thing that Meta is apparently experimenting with is going to help out a ton for those of us that enjoy using hand tracking. As apparently Meta is still experimenting with hand tracking controller emulation. In case you don't know what this could mean, it means that Meta is essentially trying to emulate controllers, all the buttons, triggers, and joysticks with just hand tracking. Where did I get this information? Well, of course, from Luna on Twitter. Don't ask me how I found this, but Meta may still be experimenting with the ability to emulate controllers with hand tracking. Clearly, this looks like a feature under experimental settings, a screenshot that isn't exactly amazing, and we're not supposed to ask where this was found, so we're not going to. Either way, I think this is really cool and would add the ability to play a ton of different games with just hand tracking. It would also make it a lot easier for the developers, if you ask me, if if they didn't have to invent controls, we could just kind of map them ourselves with gestures inside the settings. Next thing that we have on the list is apparently augments are here. Multiple users are reporting finally having access to the V64 PTC, and apparently that's rolling out the previously Quest Pro exclusive virtual environment Cascadia to all users, and it now has a spot for the first encounters augment for those that are on Quest 3. In case you don't know, augments are those funny things we can place around our homes inside augmented reality. They were showed off during Meta Connect, and a lot of people are still waiting on them to happen. Well, apparently, they may now finally be rolling out. Do you know what else is rolling out that a lot of people were waiting for? USB external microphones. I don't know how many of you guys record on Quest, but I know it's actually a larger amount than I originally thought, judging by the comment section. And I know a lot of you actually really dislike the Quest 3's mic. This isn't just about recording recording, by the way. This, as a feature, should allow you to use USB external microphones system-wide on the Quest, meaning you should be able to use your favorite USB microphone, enhancing your audio in any multiplayer game that you play. I think that's really, really cool, and it's a feature that will definitely improve the gameplay for many users. Not only this, but there may be an undocumented change that will improve augmented reality for many users. Luna posted on Twitter. I have no way of verifying this, but in V64, PTC Quest 3 seems to have slightly higher dynamic range and or better contrast adjustment in pass-through. And then Luna retweeted with, I may not be crazy. Translating this post, V64 PTC came to Quest 3. It might just be my imagination, but I feel like the pass-through makes it easier to see my PC and smartphone screens. I feel like the whites were more blown out before. You can read it even if Twitter or Teams doesn't expand. Of course, Meta is constantly improving augmented reality. A lot of people love criticizing augmented reality on our Quest devices. I mean, if you look at the way it looks and the way it looks in promo shots, yeah, there is a bit of a discrepancy. I do find it weird though that this does seem to be an undocumented change. This happens a lot though. Companies sometimes just undocument the most exciting changes. Then again, we might actually see it in the official changelog. Hopefully this is actually the case because I would seriously enjoy not having to take my headset off to read finer text per se. Another very cool feature that I'm actually surprised wasn't here until now is we can now change release channels inside the headset. Previously, to change release channels for apps, we would have to use a web browser, scroll down to the bottom and change a release channel. So say you wanted to use the beta version of Virtual Desktop, that's the way you would need to do that. According to Luna, we can now do that by going to Settings, Apps, Installed and clicking on the app. This will be a welcome change by many beta testers or people that just want to change to a specific channel on a specific app, because there has been more and more apps recently utilizing that beta channel feature. Meta is reportedly only allowing certain developers to disable the AR boundary system. According to Upload VR, Quest mixed reality apps can disable the annoying safety boundary, but only a handful of whitelisted developers can ship this on the Quest Store and App Lab. Boundary, formerly called Guardian, is certainly useful in virtual reality. 
so that you don't hit anything, you know, in your play space, you don't make anything fall, you don't destroy your TV, etc, etc. However, in augmented reality, this is pretty much useless, as you should be able to see the space around you already. This should be completely unnecessary. And yet, it's still there sometimes. In V57, system software changelog, Meta said some apps with mixed reality will no longer have boundary, but the company didn't say which apps this included, nor the mechanism for this happening. Upload VR has now learned that any Quest app can disable boundary when using past through by including a contextual boundaryless app flag in the manifest. However, the upload system for Quest Store and App Lab will automatically reject any app build using this flag unless the developer is on a special meta whitelist. Currently, some whitelisted apps include Cubism, Archeo, Aspire Tooth, Stealth, Operatives, Meta's own First Encounters demo, and Laser Dance. That's actually incredibly annoying. Why on earth would some people be whitelisted to remove the boundary and others not? I don't know, maybe you guys have an idea? Leave it down below if you do. Let's move on to the next piece of news. Apparently, Meta still plans to ship the cheaper version of the Quest 3 in China, and they're probably going to push that even harder now that we know the Apple Vision Pro is also launching in China. They're planning to do this via a partnership with Tencent, and this is what the information reports. We have a ton of information on this upcoming headset if you want to know more. Leaks and rumors and all that good stuff is in this video right up here, but this upcoming headset is rumored to be called the Quest 3 Lite or the Quest 3S. Honestly, I'm banking on the Quest 3 ass now with all those rumors, though there's no strong evidence for any final name yet. Originally, we were told that this deal was off and it wasn't happening. However, now today, the information's Wayne Ma reports that Meta and Tencent still plan to release the cheaper version of the Quest 3 in the Chinese market in the fourth quarter of this year. Ma has a good track record of accurately reporting the future moves of Meta and Apple. The reported structure of the partnership was that Tencent would sell and support the Quest headset in China while both companies would work together on localization and transportation of Quest Store content. Meta would get most of the device revenue, while Tencent would get most of the content revenue. This wouldn't be a novel arrangement for Tencent. It has already been selling and supporting the Nintendo Switch in the Chinese market since 2019. So there you go. The Apple Vision Pro in China might actually have a pretty strong competitor. Spatialify for the iPhone 15 Pro can now apparently capture HDR spatial videos at 10 1080p, 60fps, or 4K, 30fps. Spatial video is Apple's term for stereoscopic 3D video on its devices. Currently, only the Apple Vision Pro and the two iPhone 15 Pro models can record spatial videos. These 3D videos are then saved in the Apple HEVC stereo video profile format. So in case you guys want to record 3D using Spatialify, you can now do that at a higher resolution with beautiful HDR. Now talking about the Apple Vision Pro, you guys remember that patent that looked kind of like a pencil that Apple would release as a controller for the Vision Pro? Well, apparently that might actually be happening to some extent. The new Apple Pencil with Vision Pro support is reportedly being tested by Apple. Mac Rumors cites a source familiar with the matter as saying Apple has internally tested such a stylus to allow drawing in Vision OS apps like Freeform. The report doesn't however go into any specific detail on how the device works. Supporting the report's claims, in February, VR developer RJ White found a reference to a stylus in Unity Polyspatial Package for Vision OS. I can see this coming in really handy as the Vision Pro is meant to be more of a productivity device. And we know from flat screen, touch screen devices that people do enjoy using a stylus for productivity and precision. The same thing could go for the Vision Pro, especially if we could place down a virtual piece of paper or something like that on an actual table and draw on the actual table. That could provide stability for our hand, as you know, you're not drawing in virtual space, even though drawing in virtual space in itself would be really, really cool. I feel like drawing on a flat surface without anything actually being there could be quite trippy, especially if done correctly. So I'm looking forward to Apple finally starting to release some sort of controllers for their devices, even if it is just a pen to begin with. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day or night. If you guys like this one, please leave a like. If you disliked it, I guess this one works too. But let me know why down below. If you guys are not yet part of our community, check out our Discord and our Reddit down below where I want to see you posting your spicy memes. If you guys are Polish, I've got a Polish channel down below. We're still working on that video for that Polish channel. It's going to be a bigger one. And as usual, thank you so much to all the patrons supporting this channel. You guys are amazing. And thank you so, so much to anyone else supporting the channel anyway perform seriously so much love to you guys you're helping out a ton and your support means a lot to me as usual if you guys want to be notified of which content coming up on the channel make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead dig my bell and see you again in the next video peace
Uber for you! Oh Hello. Wow! Wow! Enter my Z Uber. Yes, sir. Fresh trim. What's up, bro? Yo. 